you know, it's a kind of exciting topic for people, even you know, outside of artificial intelligence, is IQ tests. There, I think it's Mensa, whatever. There's different degrees of difficulty for questions. We talked about this offline a little bit too, about sort of difficult questions. You know, what makes a question on an IQ test more difficult or less difficult? Do you think? So the the thing to keep in mind is that there's no such thing as a question that's intrinsically difficult. It has to be difficult with respect to the things you already know and the things you can already do, right? So in uh, in terms of uh, an IQ test question, typically we'd have, uh, it would be structured, for instance, as a set of demonstration input and output pairs, right? And then you would be given uh, a test input, a prompt, and you, you, you would need to recognize or produce the corresponding output. And in that narrow context, you could say a difficult question uh, is a question where um, the input prompt is very surprising and unexpected given the, the training examples. Just even the nature of the patterns that you're observing in the input yes. prompt. For instance, let's say you have a, a, a rotation problem. You must rotate a shape by 90 degrees. If I give you two examples and then I give you one, one uh, prompt, which is actually one of the two training examples, then there is zero generalization difficulty for the task. It's actually a trivial task. You, you just recognize that it's one, one of the training examples and you produce the same answer. Now, if it's, uh, if it's a more complex shape, there is you know, a little bit more generalization, but it remains that you are still doing the same thing at test time as you were uh, being demonstrated at, at training time. A difficult task is a task that will require some amount of uh, uh, test time adaptation, some amount of uh, improvisation, right? So uh, consider, I don't know, uh, you're, you're teaching a class on like quantum physics or something. Um, if, uh, if you wanted to kind of test the understanding that students have of the material, you would come up with uh, an exam uh, that's very different from anything they've seen like on the internet when they were cramming. Uh, on the other hand, if you wanted to make it easy, you would just give them something that's uh, very similar to the, the mock exams that, that, they've, that they've taken, something that's just a simple interpolation of questions that they've, they've already seen. And so that would be an easy exam. It's very similar to what you've been trained on. And a difficult exam is one that really probes your understanding because it forces you uh, to improvise. It forces you to do things uh, that are different from what you were exposed to before. So that said, it doesn't mean that the exam that requires improvisation is intrinsically hard, right? Because maybe you're, you're a quantum physics expert so when you take the exam, this is actually stuff that despite being new, new to the students, it's not new to you, right? Uh, so it can only be difficult with respect to what the test taker already knows and with respect to the information that the test taker has about the task. So that's what I mean by controlling for priors, what you, the information you bring to the table. And the experience. And experience, which is the training data. So in, in the case of the, the quantum physics exam, that would be uh, all the, the, the course material itself and all the mock exams that students might have taken online. Yeah, it's interesting because um, so I've also, I, I, I sent you an email and I asked you, like, I've been, a, this just this curious question of, um, you know, what's a really hard IQ test question? Mm -hmm. And I've been talking to also people who have designed IQ tests. There's a few folks on the internet. It's like a thing. People are really curious about it. First of all, most of the IQ tests they designed, they like religiously uh, protect against the correct answers. Like you can't find the correct answers anywhere. In fact, the question is ruined once you know, even like the approach you're supposed to take. Mm -hmm. So they're very- That said, the, the approach is implicit in, in the training examples. So if you release the training examples, it's over. Well, which is why in, in Arc, for instance, there is a test set that is private and no one has seen it. No, for really tough IQ questions, it's not obvious. It's not because the ambiguity, like it's, uh, 
I mean, we'll have to look through them, but like some number sequences and so on, it's not completely clear. Mm -hmm. So like you can get a sense, but there's like some, you know, when you look at a number sequence, I don't know, uh, uh, like your Fibonacci number sequence, if you look at the first few numbers, that sequence could be completed in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some are, if you think deeply, are more correct than others. Like there's a kind of... Um, intuitive simplicity and elegance to the correct solution. Yes. I am personally not a fan of ambiguity in, in uh, test questions, actually. But I think you can have difficulty uh, without requiring ambiguity simply by making the test uh, require a lot of extrapolation over the three examples. But the, uh, the beautiful question is difficult, but gives away everything when you give the training example. Basically, yes. Meaning that, so the 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 tests I'm I'm interested in in creating are, are not necessarily difficult uh, for humans because uh, human intelligence is the benchmark. Uh, they're supposed to be difficult uh, for machines in ways that are easy for humans. Like I think an ideal uh, test of human and machine intelligence is a test that is uh, actionable, uh, that highlights uh, the need for progress. And that highlights the direction in which you should be making progress. I, I, th I think we'll, we'll talk about the arc challenge and the test you've constructed. You have these elegant examples. I think that highlight, like, this is really easy for us humans, uh, but it's really hard for machines. Mm -hmm. But on the, you know, the designing an IQ test for IQs of like a, a higher than 160 and so on, you have to say, you have to take that and put it on steroids, right? You have to think like, what is hard for humans? Mm -hmm. And that's a fascinating exercise in in itself, I think. And it was an interesting question of what it takes to create a really hard question for humans, because um, you again have to do the same process as you mentioned, which is, uh, you know, something um, basically where the experience that you have likely to have encountered throughout your whole life, even if you've prepared for IQ tests, which is a big challenge, that this will still be novel for you. Mm. Yeah, I mean, novelty is a requirement. Uh, you should not be able to practice for the questions that you're going to be tested on. That's important. That's because otherwise, what you're doing is not exhibiting intelligence. What you're doing is just retrieving uh, what you've been exposed before. It's, it's the same thing as a deep learning model. If you train a deep learning model on uh, all the possible answers, then it will ace your test. In the same way that, uh, um, you know, uh, a, a stupid student uh, can still ace the test if they cram for it. Uh, they memorize, uh, you know, a hundred uh, different possible mock exams, and then they hope that the actual exam will be a very simple uh, interpolation of the mock exams. And that student could just be a deep learning model at that point. But you can actually do that without any understanding of the material. And in fact, many students <laughs> pass the exams in exactly this way. Right. And if you want to avoid that, you need an exam that's unlike anything they've seen that really probes uh, their understanding. 